My parents are living a life I don't want to live at 70. Women are really the pioneers of aging. A woman really needs chocolate. Love older women, younger men. Woman a pause. Yeah. <laughs> women who don't have to pause. We, we are best friends. Minnesota Okinawa. We are the Mountain Women of Jackson Hole. To your health. I have prepared myself to be where I am. Having a purpose is the key. People say I must be special to do this, but I'm not special. I just love. Part of my purpose is to help those little things make a gigantic difference. We all have challenges. None of us get through this lifetime without a hard time. Breast cancer is really a disease related to hormones. It's like the play, you know. My mother wouldn't say the word. Anything that you do to prevent heart disease also prevents cancer and makes you live longer and better. It isn't ever too late. Five girls to simulate what an actual jam would be. I cry, I feel much better afterwards. This is why I do what I do. Our estrogen decreases and it really affects our sex drive. The hormone changes, he ain't got no problems compared to that, I promise you. We're not gonna go back to hunter-gatherer, but we do have to make some changes. America's lifestyle is killing us. Age is just a number. The older a tree gets, the more beautiful it gets. It's not really a male-dominated world. Men just think it is. At the University of Michigan's A. Alfred Taubman Medical Research Institute, we're standing behind women as they embrace all of life to the fullest. New Step Ann Arbor, supporting the active lives of women with inclusive fitness products for over 20 years. The area agencies on aging serving Southeast Michigan are a trusted resource for and a proud supporter of today's aging woman. Millions of women today have type 2 diabetes. It's a preventable disease that's directly related to lifestyle, eating habits, and just how little we exercise. I'm Desiree Cooper. Today we turn to the experts to help us understand better what type 2 diabetes is and how to avoid its devastating health consequences. If we're going to be living in a long-lived society, what are we doing, each and every one of us, to take responsibility for our health and well-being? Fat is not just about looking, people think, oh, you know, this is snob because uh, people say we are ugly. No, it's about health and it's about your irresponsibility towards humanity, toward, first of all, towards your own body but then also toward society as a whole. Because you see all, all the countries now are going bankrupt because they can't solve the health issue. And the health issue is mostly from these problems of overweight. I was an athlete in high school and for part of college, but um, I just kind of got lazy, I guess. 35 is where you should stop you know, eating all that junk and pay attention. Stop smoking, stop drinking you know, heavy stuff and have some kind of a way to nourish yourself that, that makes you happy because that's very important. I think women are very in tune with their bodies so you feel, we feel changes. We understand when something is not right. If things are changing that are not normal within your everyday life, then pay attention to that and see a doctor and get some tests done. I have dedicated my entire career to the fight of diabetes and its complication. This is uh, truly an epidemic uh, problem in the U.S. and throughout the world. Uh, it is also an immense burden on our patients' quality of life. I was gaining weight rather quickly and I thought it was my thyroid. So we went, I went in to get tests um, and they came back and said that you have type 2 diabetes. The way the doctor said it was like, it's not good news, and I'm thinking cancer or something like that. And when she said diabetes, I was like, I will punch you in the throat because 
we can deal with diabetes. Diabetes itself, it's part of the endocrine disorders here in the United States and uh, in the Western world because in reality, uh, insulin is a hormone and all endocrine disorders are related with disorders of hormonal functions. There are two forms of diabetes mainly, type 1 diabetes and type 2 diabetes. Type 2 diabetes is by far the most common form uh, of diabetes and it's the one that actually accounts for this global epidemic. Uh, it is associated with a variety of risk factors among which uh, increase weight and obesity uh, as well as uh, a decrease in insulin sensitivity, uh, changes in muscles and adipocytes uh, which are the fat cell biology as well as a variety of hormone produced by the gut. Your blood sugar should ideally be between 80 and 120. So mine were like 360, 370 and so they were like that all the time and that was another thing I was very tired I had headaches a lot, so these were all the symptoms of what I thought was my thyroid, but it turned out to be uh, diabetes. I didn't really alter my eating habits like I should have at first, and so I went from just oral to then uh, insulin. So, and even then I was still kind of messing around with it a little bit. Um, and then, you know, recently because of me getting older, I've realized that that is important, that you have to do the exercise and the food intake monitoring. The way we eat has also changed dramatically the uh, landscape of diabetes. A Western diet which is rich in sugars, um, carbohydrates which are highly processed such as breads and pasta and potatoes and sweets um, or uh, the sodas, uh, the su sweet uh, beverages that people are consuming uh, in much larger quantities that, that are needed um, play an important role. One of the first things that was a shock to me uh, when I was working with a dietitian is that she had a baby food bottle um, and by, I mean food, not, you know, drinking bottle, but a little baby food bottle, and it was full of sugar. And she said, this is how much sugar is in the average bottle of Coke. And I'm talking about the personal 20 ounces. So I was like, wow. That was the beginning of me starting to understand about sugar added and how that can affect my blood sugar and my, you know, my energy and things like that. I think in my case, um, me getting diagnosed was lifestyle driven because um, I was just a carbaholic, you know, I eat a lot of carbs and a lot of sugar and the thing about that is the more carbs and sugar you eat, the more your body wants them. So it's kind of a catch-22, so you have to make the conscious decision to just stop it and eat more protein and more vegetables and more fruit and natural foods. That's the other thing, I used to eat a lot of fast food, a lot of processed food and I don't anymore. This was several years and several pounds ago before I had control of my diabetes. Ever since I got control, I feel a thousand times better. There are now quite large evidence demonstrating that Mediterranean diet appears to have a protective effect against progression of diabetes uh, and also of cardiovascular disease, uh, two very important uh, issues when dealing with diabetes. And in addition, the fact that we became uh, more and more sedentary, people are not exercising and we have done studies showing that even a limited amount of moderate intensity exercise such as walking, two to three hours of walking a week could significantly reduce the risk of developing diabetes, particularly in women. Although it's true that the uh, frequency of this disease has increased in all ages, it is specifically true for older uh, adults. Having type 2 diabetes increases the risk of having cardiovascular disease such as myocardial infarction, stroke and congestive heart failure. If you have been diagnosed with type 2 diabetes, remember however that you have the power to control your disease. Physical activity, uh, it, it's, it's in some ways a challenge to fit into our daily lives when we're so time crunched with other commitments. Um, but you can be active in so many ways that are fun. Um, I think women shouldn't think about needing to get a gym membership and go on the Stairmaster. What about gardening? 
What about walking with a friend? What about trying that swimming class with your daughter? Because why not, you know? Exercise doesn't have to be difficult or boring or too sweaty. It can be um, laughter and activity and learning a new skill. I try to do at least three days a week, some type of exercise more if I can. Um, I'm also a PhD student myself, so you don't have to devote some time to studying or whatever, but I always try to fit in a minimum of 30 minutes of something. Um, whatever you do, I'm more of a swimmer, so I swim a lot, I walk a lot, I don't run like I used to just because my knees are uh, <laughs> older. You could start later in life, absolutely. There's no age limit as to when you want to get fit in your lifetime, but it only makes sense to start off when you're younger because when all of us get to the age of 50 we hit menopause or perimenopause or postmenopause we know obesity sets in arthralgia set in our amount of exercise we can do at that age will be limited having said that if you're still motivated to do it you can still achieve it how is life life is great i've been losing weight i've been exercising like you told me to do I've been hired a personal trainer to help me Whew, get back and to the diet. The diet's been great. Not eating red meat every day. Nope, not eating red meat. Not eating Max and Armas. No fast Thank food. You. Lungs are absolutely fabulous. People don't. I think when they hear diabetes, they think it's serious, but not really. Like it's not like cancer. So you may or may not uh, alter your eating habits or your lifestyle changes. But you do have to monitor yourself and you have to, you know, watch what you eat and you have to exercise and you have to be aware of spikes in your sugar. Uh, so take it seriously. As healthcare providers, we can do studies. We can teach you how to eat. We can show you how to exercise. But most importantly, is it you? It is the discipline that you can find within yourself that will help prevent this devastating disease. Ladies, if you want to live a longer, happier, healthier life, you got to get rid of the pop. I know it's calling your name, but just say no anyway. Say no to pop. Feels great. Just about anyone over 50 can relate to soreness in the joints. We occasionally pop a pill to relieve the pain. But what happens when mild arthritis leads to the erosion of the knees? This creates a lifestyle of little or no movement, and that leads to a range of other health issues over time. Well, thankfully, with advancements in joint replacement, a woman who once would have been confined to the couch can now once again live her life. Here's her story. I was uh, teaching, I was coaching, I was playing sports. Uh, I traveled uh, an hour each way home to work and usually an hour down to play rugby, baseball, softball, basketball. I loved catching. I felt like I could control the game, uh, stop it, speed it up, do whatever. I uh, also had a lot of people that, you know, that was that final play. They tried to score and being able to stop them, I loved doing that. Just the contact, uh, the camaraderie. My best friends today are still the same people that I played sports with. I have just retired and one of my plans is to do a lot of traveling, uh, being able to do things like hiking and biking and uh, just going to places that, you know, you really need your legs to be able to get to. Because of playing sports and the things that I have done, uh, it has probably done some things to my knees. And I also know with the arthritis, it was in both generations of my family, that that is also playing a role. I'm having an um, extreme amount of pain and uh, difficulty uh, movement, natural walking, getting up and down. Arthritis is um, not so much a disease for most of us, although there is a disease of arthritis. Things such as rheumatoid arthritis, psoriatic arthritis, those are actually diseases where our body has sort of turned against ourselves and literally eats the cartilage off the end of the bone. Um, for most of us, we have what's called wear and tear arthritis, osteoarthritis. As we age, people think that osteoarthritis is really a disease of aging. And in actual fact, the more we learn about this, the more we realize it's not just aging. 
because some of us, as we all know, age a little better than the rest of us. And not all joint cartilage is created equal. Some people simply wear their joints out. Some people have joints that go forever. In actual fact, most of what we get as osteoarthritis is pr probably genetically predisposed. What all of this really is, is that it leads to a wearing away of the cartilage that lines the ends of our bones. And what most people have when they come to joint replacement surgery is bone on bone. Once you start with a little bit of arthritis, you're gonna end up with a joint replacement sooner or later. And what happens is, I can't treat osteoarthritis. I can treat the symptoms of osteoarthritis, but all we're doing there is making you feel better while your joint is getting worse. You have osteoarthritis, you wanna make your joint last longer, you need to lose weight and you need to do low impact aerobic exercise. Joint replacement in this day and age is a miracle. I have put on weight through this process and I want to take it off, but every time I would go and start doing exercise, I, it would be very painful, it was very difficult, I'd have a lot of swelling and things that I could not do because of those types of things in relationship to my knee. I can't even tell you the last time I was on my knees or sat down on the floor because I know I can't get up from either spot. I struggle now even going and sitting, you know, how high can I go up in bleachers because I can't bend my knee to even get up above the first, you know, bench. Uh, those are not things that I wanted to have to worry about. I want to be able to show that I can do it so that my nieces and nephews understand the importance of it and they stay involved in things and that it's just, it is part of your life. I need to be able to, you know, get up from a seat, to be able to walk to pick something up, to even be able to go answer the phone uh, is a difficult thing. Sometimes I can get up, but I, my body doesn't want to go when I want it to go. And so sometimes by the time I get to the phone, that call's already gone. And so it's little things like that that I don't think anyone should have to worry about. Next week, I'm going to have a, a total knee replacement. They're going to go in and uh, take that, what I have there now, uh, out, and they're going to put in a new knee. And that will allow me then that mobility to be able to um, do things such as bend and so forth, so I'll be able to do the things that I would like to do. You know, I've been saying my affirmations this morning, so that'll get me through. What we're getting ready to do today is a knee replacement. Um, this is a lady who's had osteoarthritis in her knee for quite some time now. She suffered for a number of years, and it's now to the point where she can't do any of the things that uh, really make her who she is. Hey there. Hey. I will go get your allergy Are you ready to go? And a pillow. She is. All right. <laughs> I need your initials right on the front of that kneecap. Okay. And this one? The one you want fixed. Okay. This is what it looks like seven weeks later. Yeah, you can just bend it. So there it is. Okay. What you live with now, if you suck it up and play with pain today, guess what all it is is it hurts more tomorrow right. so if there's such a thing as good pain what you have in the next few weeks is good pain because normally once you push through that you don't have that pain anymore you'll have a different pain in the morning trying to get it even a little further right all righty okay. I'll see you back there okay. I'm ready to go let's do this let's jump into the deep end of the pool This is a front to back or what's called an AP x-ray and you can see there's space between the bones here. There's no space between the bones there. And that's what arthritis really looks like. People talk about, oh, can't you scope my knee and scrape out the arthritis? And I try to explain to people that arthritis is a pothole in the parking lot. It's not a speed bump. So there's really nothing you can scrape out because it's already worn away.
This is actually the jig that's been created to fit on her knee. It's just like carpentry, you measure twice and cut once. line in the sand that people will give up their activities and give up their activities until they actually have to give up the things that really make them feel like the person that they are. And eventually the pain and disability from arthritis will steal those things from you too. And what knee replacement does is it essentially gives you back your life. The neat part of all of this is she gets up and walks this afternoon. It's been eight months since I've had my surgery, and um, I've been able to do a lot more things than I have in the past. I've been able to get out and walk. I've been able to do a lot of the chores and things around the house. And um, right now, currently, I'm working on a fence out front. Uh, it's very tedious and time consuming, but to me, it's gonna be a challenge. It's one thing I'm trying to accomplish, and um, I'm really kind of getting into it and enjoying it, and I don't have the pain that pain piece is gone, and that makes a major difference. I'm getting up and I'm going, what am I gonna do today? Okay. With the uh, right leg, I have the full mobility that I feel I need to use and get up and down stairs, but with the left, I don't have that 90 degree. What my real goal was to do was to be able to ride a bike again. Um, I can't do that yet. I hope to have the left leg done eventually, hopefully by the end of the year and uh, then maybe I'll be running again back out front. I have my life back again. My parents are extremely arthritic. They couldn't come to my daughter's graduation. And I realized what I will have to do not to end up like them. Life is so beautiful and you have to embrace it. And the thought of being homebound, watching the same TV shows every day for 15 years, it scares the hell out of me and I won't do it. Every 10 years, our body as women go through amazing changes. Older adults who live well for a long time, even with arthritis, even with hip replacements and other joint replacements, they exercise. They make a commitment to their body being strong and fit. Brenda came to me almost 70 years old with a significant amount of weight on her, she could not move. It was, it was impossible for us to do anything in this gym. She couldn't walk, she couldn't go shopping, she couldn't tie her shoes, she couldn't dress herself. There was very little she could do. And as she kept aging, it just kept getting worse. And the arthritis was taking over her body. She tried everything just to stop because she just didn't want to do it, but she never did. And now all of the athletic events that she's involved in is amazing. and you will change your life if you put the work into it. You're not gonna fall as much if you're fit. If you do fall, you won't be hurt if you're fit. So it takes discipline, commitment, and it becomes a habit. It becomes a life habit that you value so highly, you don't compromise and you enjoy it. What disease is the number one killer of women? No, not breast cancer, it's heart disease. 
I'm Desiree Cooper. Join me next week as we dedicate an episode to women's heart care. You're not going to want to miss it. Look beyond your horizon. Look beyond your world. Speak on over the edge now. Limit yourself in a girl. Those dreams you had 20 years ago need to be redefined. So much smarter, stronger now. It's time for you to shine. Looking at the hourglass, the sand's moving oh so fast. But you keep going through the motion. At the University of Michigan's A. Alfred Taubman Medical Research Institute, we're standing behind women as they embrace all of life to the fullest.